Hey, hey, here out in the garage with Easy Jeezy. It's Saturday. Hope your day is going well. I just got back from a ride up the canyon and I did not have my camera with me. Uh, was over at Mary's and we had an early morning yoga class and we just said on the way back from yoga, hey, it's just a perfect morning. Let's, uh, let's go up the canyon and get a cup of coffee. There's a little town called Drake and if you take the right side fork, it will take you to uh, Glen Haven, and they still have coffee for 25 cents a cup. A little styrofoam cup, but where in the heck can you get coffee for 25 cents? Uh, but they make up for it on some homemade cinnamon rolls that are 350. So we went up there and had some coffee and split a, a roll and uh, came back down to town, and I says, okay. I got uh, 1,400 miles on the engine, and it's just about, I was almost going to add some oil, and I thought, eh, we'll just kind of go on this easy drive, and when I get home, I'll, I'll dump the oil. So I'll put you on the stand, and uh, it's, uh, I, I brought it home hot, and that was probably a 50-mile drive, and it's uh, definitely plenty black, <laughs> plenty dirty. Uh, for sure, and I'm gonna pull the screen out this time. Uh, this will be the first time where I'm I'm gonna change everything, and I am gonna since this is man, I'm just really liking this engine. It is it is probably the most anemic, boring engine I've ever ever driven for any length of time. But I'm starting to uh, like it. It's perfect for in town. It out on the road now I'm starting to understand where you guys that have older worn out 1600s and stuff are always looking for a cheap uh, horsepower upgrade because yeah when you're in fourth gear in this thing of course I'm in the mountains so you know I'm used to having an engine where you step on the gas and something happens without shifting um, but you pay for that in maintenance and gas mileage and and everything else the noise level so on and so forth this is Got the stock cam, stock springs, stock rocker shafts and springs. I won't be adjusting the valves here. I've checked it. Uh, they needed a couple adjustments, and I did change the uh, oil and filter at about 300 miles. I'm not sure. can't remember if I made a video on that or not, but we're going to go ahead and take this filter off, and I'm going to pull the screen out, and we're going to look the whole thing over. And I have an aluminum cover on there now. I got this kit and this is brand new and it's straight so I'm gonna give it a try I always seem to have these things leak and I got one of those real powerful magnets I mean this thing is really powerful and I have this chrome plated uh, magnetic plug and that's how it looked after I wiped it off pulled it out of the engine and and it didn't seal perfectly I had a drip and that's probably one of the places that caused me to lose a little bit of oil over the last few weeks here so I'm gonna try this one and I'm putting a standard plug and I'm trying something else different oh I got this tightened down these I've been running these Toyota oil filters I really like these it's uh, for a 22 R or 22 RE engine uh, very popular with those years of uh, Toyota engines and it's got a nice relief plug it's put together nice it's a compact size I really really like this thing and I was able to find these things at Walmart when you get them at the dealer they usually try to sell you a gasket for 99 cents and I enlarged the hole so instead of using the traditional copper crush gasket I'm gonna go with this gasket. I used it on uh, the Baja the last time and it still isn't leaking. I really like it. I'm not sure. It's not exactly rubber, but it's some sort of fibrous. And uh, this one was a new gasket and it leaked and I always have drips. My, <laughs> I mean, they may stay dry for a while, but I always seem to get plenty of, of my share of leaks. So let me put you on the stand and we'll, uh, we'll just I don't know what you can see from here, but uh, you can watch me uh, just so you see what's going on. I'm, I'm real curious too as to uh, if there's any, I'm sure we're going to find some uh, material from the camshaft coating as well as uh, probably a little gasket sealer, some case sealer. Uh, go 
got the engines cooled off too. And uh, it's just a beautiful day. I probably my fat head is probably blocking your view. But uh, having an oil filter, I don't I don't know that these screens I don't usually use screens for high RPM they're too restrictive on my bigger stroker motors and and hot rod type motors uh, I don't recommend using it but I don't recommend going without it um, you should have some type of a cartridge filter I mean it's too easy to do that now they have them on the oil pumps which is one way I like it or to full flow your system and you know, either any of those items are a bother, but nonetheless. Now, where's my rags? I'm real well prepared. Ooh, there's a lot of crud sitting on this, too. Ah. Ah. Nah, not that big of a deal. But I would have liked to see it just perfectly clean. But this is off the bottom of the sump, and this is straight away coming back from a... Uh, 50 some mile drive, easy drive, an easy jeezy drive. Oh, I'm not very in the movie mode today and still working on my other problems with my foundation. Oh, this looks good. This looks better than I thought it would. And I did jack up the, uh, front of the car. Oh, I guess things aren't as bad as I thought. Nice. I'm pretty happy with that. Yeah. And I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, there's nothing even worth cleaning off on this. I'm gonna dry off the oil and put on a new gasket and stick this thing back in. I'm very happy with that. Yeah, there's just a couple little Trace pieces of uh, that parkerization that is on your camshafts. I guess a lot of that came off on the first oil change, which was, uh, at, like I said, 300 miles. Very nice. Very happy with that. I'll get a razor blade. I don't put any uh, sealer on that. That's probably another reason why I have leaks. But I just, it just seems like it makes a mess. If you put some RTV or something on the threads of those studs, I mean, it's great when you're putting it together, but then you're going to have to clean it off. And, you know, the book calls out uh, oil changes at 1,500 miles. So. You know, why not just change oil? Now, with the modern oils we have today, and I don't want this to turn into an oil debate, but I do want to uh, lightly cover this subject because I know somebody will be asked, and it may make some people upset, but it may give other people uh, a sigh of relief that I'm in agreement with them but I have been running full synthetic oil in the Baja in my 2 liter and I have had no problems with oil temperatures I haven't taken it on a trip or anything like that but uh, I just see no reason not to uh, if you want some supporting information on that go to air cooled net and they have some tech articles and they have some uh, an excellent discussion on synthetic oils. My brother is an Amsoil dealer. I used to be an Amsoil dealer. No, I do not use Amsoil anymore. I think it's overpriced. Uh, it may come out better on their four ball wear test, but I don't give a darn. Um, I'm not putting that many. Uh, I'm not stressing out that much, and I think it's overpriced, and I don't like. I'm totally against. Uh, these pyramid 
sales organizations. If you've got a good product, you've got a good product, sell it. Uh, sell it at a fair price, but as far as making a career out of that stuff, you do not like it. Oh, now, taking off my oil filter, I was able to do it with my bare hands. Oh, it's been hot here. Summer's here. These 90 degree days. I don't know how you people deal with the humidity in, in other parts of the country. But uh, I don't like it. So, anyhow, let me, uh, let me do one more thing. I've got one of those high tension magnets right on the outside of that filter uh, and when we take that apart you will see that there will be some some type of a particle build up right where that magnet is I'm, I'm just sure of that it looks everything looks better at this point than it did on the 300 mile change and right now I'm at uh, 400 miles 1400 miles so this has got uh, like a thousand miles and this is a I don't know if I did this before I know I've made videos and probably didn't post them this is a uh, Volkswagen service manual and it is uh, on the bus and it's through 78 and what they say in the lubricant section here is single grade oils such as SAE 30 were formerly recommended for use in VW engines because of the unreliable quality of the then available multi-grade engine oils. The new high standard for engine oils that conform to the American Petroleum Institute uh, has made such multi-grade oils usable for use in the VW engine Car owners will find that these high-quality multi-grade oils offer many advantages in the convenience, performance, and economy, even in older model cars. And they they have their viscosity specifications. And the the one I'm going to use is the 10W30 because it covers a wide range of temperatures. And like the book said, and I mean this is the area of controversy that might upset a few people because there's there's some old school dyed in the wool people that are just say you know I run 30 weight and that's what it that's what it's, the book says that's what the factory said that's what the factory said in the 60s yes but times have changed and here you find something that's in the late 70s and they are saying in the Bentley book go ahead and run the 10w30 nothing matter running the 30 weight if you want to run 30 in the summer and 20 in the winter or whatever whatever your preferences all the oils are so fantastic now compared to what they used to be if you want to run 15 dollar a quart what's that uh oh there's there's all kinds of specialty places and if you know if you spend a lot of money on your engine and you feel that you got to spend that kind of money on the oil to keep it alive longer and that it's going to last longer then that's what you should use I, I'm not getting into that controversy I'm just showing you as far as I'm concerned this was a engine experiment for me building a used engine with used parts and I still spent over a thousand dollars on it but to me this engine is disposable and it's just been an experiment and so far running the stock cam and stock valve train um, I'm not worried about the oils for right now I am uh, just using up old stock and I got some 1030 conventional valvoline that I had left from my break-in and I'm gonna finish that off and I'm gonna put some zinc you wanna add zinc or buy an oil that has a zinc uh, additive in it or add some zinc to it because these are flat tappet cams on my uh, so far my valves have got they got tighter I had exhaust valves that got tighter on that initial break-in I popped the valve covers and I, I checked my valves a few times and it did get tighter but that's okay that just means your valves are seating the valve seats 
are everything's kind of getting comfortable into the head there and that's to be expected and so let me get this oil filter cut apart and we'll take a look inside that and uh, then I'm just gonna call this a wrap I've been using this Lucas engine oil break-in with the zinc and I used a half a bottle of this uh, per oil chain this is uh, just an old chemical container that I found when I was working and most of these places that uh, take oil I just find it more convenient to collect five gallons of oil and then I'll take it over to O'Reilly's or AutoZone or any of those places that recycle it and let them deal with it but I try to be responsible about that Uh, oh, you can see ever so gently. Boy, this is so entirely different than the first oil change at 300 miles, guys. I don't know if you can see inside there. There is barely a hint of anything where that little powerful magnet was. And we're in the sunlight. And I'm. I'm looking between the pleats. Boy, I am tickled to bed about this. I would have left this, uh, I think the next oil filter, I'm gonna leave in there and go two oil changes with it. I don't want, I'm, I do not go 6,000 miles between oil changes. I don't care how good today's modern day oils are there. I, all this black oil that, you know when your oil turns black that's carbon and different things that uh, pollute inside your engine and I just want to get them out of there uh, a lot of people have oil leaks in their cars and they figure ah, I don't need to change the oil I just added a quart and they just keep adding every other tank of gas they add a quart and they figure yeah I don't need to change my oil that's not right you need to get stuff out of there and you need to change that oil when it's hot when all that stuff gets beat around and it's in suspension, that's when you need to get it out of there. And here is a reason I like this Toyota filter. It's got this spring relief, and that's like if your oil is really cold, and it's got quite a bit of spring pressure to it, but rather than blow your oil filter or create other problems or your oil, your bearings going without oil, this would open up and it would allow the oil to bypass the filter media and go in. It's more important, doesn't matter if you how clean your oil is, if it doesn't get to the bearings, your engine's gonna get destroyed. And we're here in the sunshine, and this just, I'm just, there was little black pieces of that camshaft coating in here on the other one. This, this looks great. I didn't keep track of which was the top or the bottom, but I'm, I'm very pleased with the container. This is your uh, check valve that goes over the holes in the front here. This is so each time that you start your engine, it's not having to fill the oil filter. So, yeah. So we talked about a lot of things. We saw my first oil change. Um, I'm happy with the uh, 1776 single port that is basically a stock engine and I'm running the 30 pick one carb it's an off-road carb um, it doesn't have much power on the top end it's just a little grunt motor but it's so smooth and it's so quiet it's a great motor for in town it's very lacking on the highway and up in the mountains if you wanna if you wanna come to a little hill and you wanna pick up speed you need to downshift I'm running a stock transmission with 412 gears and uh, I took out the uh, the close ratio transmission. I just felt as quiet as this thing is. I just felt those high performance gears were a little noisy, and I wanted to see what a stock setup. And I'm telling you, the closer I come back to stock, the more comfortable and quieter the car is. And the other day, 
I had to go to a yoga class like four miles from home and I don't know what the problem was with traffic. It took me 25 minutes. I got caught at every single light and some of them more than uh, once. I had to sit through them twice and when you've got a big engine and it was a hot day, it was like 95 out that is not good for your big stroker motors it's not good for any air-cooled engine but uh, at least like I said it's this is a lot less expensive and this is why I built this engine to put in this car which I don't like taking on long trips and long outings because um, you just don't have the weather protection and I'm just getting to the age where I like my comforts I don't want to put up with that stuff and I don't have a top and I don't li like having to crawl in and out of a buggy that has a top on it so most people don't leave them on the weather changes uh, very frequently on uh, my ride this morning up the mountains got a little sprinkle on and uh, that's just the way it is and I don't mind the sprinkle I don't mind getting a little bit wet but at any rate I'm kind of babbling on and sounding like I'm whining or complaining or threatening. I don't know. <laughs> and that's not me. So I hope you have a good rest of your day. And thanks for watching. Thanks for subbing. <laughs> Easy cheesy out. <laughs> have a great weekend, guys. We'll catch you on the next video.